this edition of 3-Minute Theory, we provide an entree into what philosopher Gilles Deleuze called societies of control. This concept is useful in considering and questioning how control, freedom, and our orientation to control and freedom function within an increasingly interconnected, technological, and surveilled world. In its simplest articulation, societies of control can be understood as an evolving form of discipline that moves beyond enclosed structures and outward into a sophisticated network of entangled systems. We'll discuss that more in a moment, but first, let's briefly talk about Foucault's description of disciplinary societies. Foucault wrote that in a disciplinary society, people's bodies and minds were trained to conform under strict methods of control that were predictable and penetrating. This type of organization ensures that populations will govern themselves through the threat of surveillance and subsequent punishment. However, Deleuze and Foucault discuss a societal shift following the disciplinary societies that coincided with the emergence of neoliberalism. In this shift, the governing of a population is not limited to enclosed spaces like the factory, but is instead freed up to operate in open systems and networks. Deleuze recognized this advancement in technology as a major force in the creation of a society of control. Let's take smartphones for example. They create the ultimate form of mobility for people, chiefly because of their constant access to the internet, our information superhighway. Why is this relevant? Well, in Deleuze's words, control is not discipline. You do not confine people with a highway, but by making highways, you multiply the means of control. People can travel infinitely and freely without being confined while being perfectly controlled. In other words, while living in a society of control can feel incredibly freeing at times, it also comes with increased surveillance. Think of how this happens with smartphones. They are devices that are freeing and that they provide us access to the information superhighway but they also exhibit new forms of control because they are always collecting data based on our actions and interactions with the technology. Thus, unlike disciplinary societies where workers are geographically linked to their places of employment and consumers purchase items in the confines of various physical markets, societies of control and the technology embedded within them provide freedom in that we can move around more, work and communicate in more flexible ways, and even buy practically anything with a few taps on a screen. This means that those of us living in societies of control often find it difficult or even impossible to find a way to disentangle ourselves from professional and interpersonal communication. In conclusion, Deleuze's Societies of Control cautions us that the freedoms promised by such mobilities are perhaps much less freeing than we may initially think or are led to believe.